Okay, everyone, thanks so much for coming tonight. My name is Nick Baker. I'm the Texas Chapter Director for Forward US, for those of you who I, I don't already know. Um, before we get started, I want to quickly give a shout out to John Sis, who's sitting in the back, um, running for sheriff. And immigration is a big part of this platform. So if you'd like to talk with him later on tonight, he'll be around. Um, and would you like to quickly say a, a couple words about your campaign? Okay. Actually, I'll probably have to leave in my half hour, but I have some cards. But uh, uh, I'm retired from the Austin Police Department. I retired for 30 years as a lieutenant. And what I'm going to do as sheriff is pull immigration out of our jails and stop some voluntary participation in immigration customs enforcement. It can be done. You know, when you got 120 to 100, 100 to 120 counties that have done it, it can be done. I fought Hamilton last time in 2011 on this. And I called him out that it was a request, but he lied to a lot of people, but it is a request. So. Uh, as sheriff, I'll pull information out right here. Of course, there's some other things like mental health conditions, uh, in person visitations I fought on as well. So I have some cards if anybody needs them. You know, my website, feel free to call me any questions you have. So, uh, you know, Hamilton's thinking about running again. And if he does, I should stay in the jail so we, nobody needs to vote and get him out. Thanks very much for coming to that job. And now, um, Zyra is going to introduce our speaker here. Good evening, everyone. My name is Zyra, and I'm one of the interns for the Texas chapter. Uh, first off, I want to say thank you to everyone for coming out. I see a few familiar faces and a couple of new ones, and it's really neat to see the Austin Forward community come together. So as many of you know, Forward is um, Forward's mission right now is to tackle comprehensive immigration reform. However, down the road, we want to tackle other challenging social issues, which is why every month we feature a presentation that goes beyond the scope of immigration reform. And this month, we're really, really excited to welcome George Kutaitis from the CEO and co-founder of Gridmates. George is a serial entrepreneur and an academic in smart grids and wireless networks. And he's going to tell us a little bit more about Gridmates, which is the world's first internet platform to um, help combat energy poverty, which is really, really neat. Um, another reason why we're really excited about George tonight is that he is an excellent example of the innovative ideas that immigrant entrepreneurs con cont contribute to our economy. So um, George has so graciously agreed to share his immigration story with us tonight. And um, with that said, help me welcome George Katitis. First of all, thank you all for uh, being here. It's my great honor to be uh, in supporting uh, this event of Forward. But uh, thank you very much for the invitation. And also be here in Capital Factory. So I'm here, I'm Greek. And uh, first of all, before we start, I would like to invite you all next week during the Austin Startup uh, Week. We are gonna hold an event on Tuesday 6th here in Capital Factory. And we are part of uh, Austin uh, Startup Week. We named the event Energize Lives because we're going to create an atmosphere. I'm going to convince you to donate electricity actually that day and support our pilot. So about my story. First of all, uh, I would like to tell you who I am, where I'm coming from, and uh, why I'm here. I'm coming from this country. I call it the weirdest country of the world. <laughs> Austin might be the most weird city. But look at this shape. It's like a fractal. <laughs> so I'm coming from this city called Thessaloniki, the top. It's the second biggest city after Athens. Athens is the capital. So I was living there almost the entire of my, my, my entire life. And every afternoon I was walking uh, in this pavement, was in the sea, having some coffees, uh, drinks with my friends, my family members. Nice life. Actually, my house is here, on the first floor. You are more welcome to visit <laughs> the Salon is the name. Uh, the most difficult part in my decision to move uh, from another country and come uh, to the United States is this one. This is a 40 minutes drive from my city. So my everyday life was, you know, working, and during the weekend, you know, 
go there and swim. So this is the place and the environment I'm coming from. I was uh, an academic. I did my PhD in uh, computer science uh, in the University of Surrey in England. I spent five years in London. Actually, this is part of a paper that I'm going to publish now. It's about game theory. Uh, I spent most of the time as an academic. Academic means that uh, you wake up, you teach, you do research proposals. I did a lot of research proposals for the European Union. You receive funding, you do research, you try to do applied research and you see that it is quite difficult. So I start not getting bored, but I was feeling that I have something uh, more to give. So pure applied research or create some innovation. Uh, I was uh, studying smart grids. Smart grids is the next generation of the power grid network. You have the energy layer, renewable energy, you know, the cables, the transmission, distribution, storage, everything. But on top of that, you have an IT layer. An IT layer of sensors, wireless networks, and algorithms that run and be transmitted in the network to provide data and command flow in every smart meter of our homes. There are, this is a virgin area for uh, a computer scientist to explore. Not a lot of uh, companies are out there yet. And uh, I have identified as a researcher that most of the companies focused on uh, monitoring, energy analytics, demand response, load management, this type of application, solar energy. So I was sitting one day on the balcony, watching that view that you saw before in Greece. And I said, why is it out there that it has not been invented yet? And I said, now you have the power and the ability to create your own energy, produce your own energy from your solar panels. All right, I can produce energy. I have the ability to manage energy. You know, my Nest thermostat, I can manage my energy. So I can produce, I can manage. I saw Elon Musk presenting the batteries. All right, I can now store energy. Produce, manage, store. What is missing? Sharing. Sharing, exchanging, giving energy. So I said, all right, I like that. So let's create a platform that I'm gonna be able from my laptop, from my smartphone, to click and give energy to somebody else. Science fiction. I said, all right, it's cool, I like it, but what's the business model there? There is innovation in the business aspect and how you're going to implement it. But uh, what is the real problem that we can solve? This was the first question that I received <coughs> when I come here in the United States. <coughs> George, we like your idea, but what is the problem that you provide a solution now? My first investor said. I went back to Greece, spent about one month here in uh, March 2000. 13, during South by Southwest, I came here for one month. Went back to Greece, and I was uh, sitting in my sofa with my father, watching the TV news. Greece, you know, has a, a financial problem, and uh, one program of uh, the TV news was focused on people that cannot afford to pay for electricity, and uh, the utility and the energy retail cut off their supply. So I saw a family, a young uh, father with a young mother and a newborn child, one year old, living in a, with a candle in their homes, in my own neighborhood, uh, feeling cold, you know, and I was watching this man crying. And I said, I want to give this person, this specific person, peer to peer, energy for one month. I'm going to pay for it. I want to provide electricity units to their home. I went and I started watching if there is a platform like that. And then I had this idea in my mind to convert this innovative and uh, you know, futuristic <coughs> idea in a platform that can provide a solution here and now. It is called energy poverty. And it is not uh, away from us. Within the United States, there are 48 million people who cannot afford to pay for heating, cooling, cooking, lighting, they cannot afford to pay for electricity. They suffer from energy poverty. 
Some of them, they give up on food instead in order to pay for electricity, for the utilities. Some of them cannot pay, so they are disconnected from the network. So I don't have electricity in my home. And uh, some of them, because they ruin their credit with the utilities, uh, they cannot rent a house and they can end up homeless. So that's a problem, but we provide a solution. So Gridmates is the first uh, internet platform, an interactive payment processor that enables the giving of energy. The idea is I click and I give energy units to somebody else. Don't think of it like uh, electrons are transmitting wirelessly and going to the cables. No. I give and I create it with energy units to the person I want to give energy. And the energy unit is the kilowatt hour. So how it works? In order to be engaging, we need to have a simple uh, interaction with the user. Three steps process. In the first step, you can select, you can connect with a grid mate. Everybody's a grid mate. A grid mate can be a donor of energy, a grid mate can be a recipient of energy. We are all grid mates. So you can select the grid mate you want to give energy, you can see the energy needs, and you can see typical crowdfunding applications, how much percentage of the goal is raised, etc. In the next step, you can select a dollar or energy amount, either a dollar amount or a kilowatt amount. And according to the person you click to select, we convert according to the electricity prices. And uh, in real time, you can see the impact of your contribution. So you click $10, you can see that this means 100 kilowatt hours. It's seven days of energy to a house. So you know exactly what is your impact of your contribution. And in the next, in the last step, once you give energy to somebody else, you can receive awards. For example, we ran a competition last month with South Bastado Estico. You gave energy, you are a part of a draw to win a free South Bastado Estico ticket. But also, because we want to support uh, clean energy and savings, we provide energy saving tips to people. Personalized for your donation. So you, you donate $10 of energy, we teach you how you can save $10 in your own utility bill. Now we are in the process of connecting uh, with the API of smart meters, so this process will be automated. You click give energy and automatically we save that in your home. But the most important functionality of GridMates is that you can create your own grid. A grid of people that you can share energy with just one click. So you, each one of you, can be an energy provider in your own grid. And the grid can be international. That's why we support uh, the motto that says we are all on the same grid. We are all grid mates. Our business is that we provide a software solution to utilities. Utilities are our main client. They can use it to reduce revenue losses from unpaid bills. So they use grid mates as part of the customer assistance programs. Nonprofits can uh, use uh, the platform in order to raise funds for their utility bills. In the United States, more than $9 billion of expenses are related to utility bills of uh, non-profit organizations. So they spend their limited funds to pay their bills instead of helping. Corporations can use our API and our social <coughs> widget to integrate that in their own uh, dashboards, websites, mobile apps. And users, they have fun. They enjoy our services, they can wow, enjoy our works, and they can give energy to somebody else. So our mission is to enable the giving of energy and end energy poverty. This is our pilot launch. It is uh, called Community First Village in East Austin. We started last March. Community First Village is a 27 acres park master plan community that provides uh, sustainable housing to approximately 240 microhomes, homeless people live there in order to restore their lives. So what we are creating is the world's first community powered by crowdsourced energy. People like Ellis are going to be living there. He used to be homeless, now he has a home to stay. Imagine 240 more homeless people to live in this village. Crowdsourced community of energy. Up to now we have received uh, more than uh, 300 donations 
from six different countries. So everybody are sending energy to a small village in this part of the sea of Austin. This is our pilot from six different countries. And here there is a typo, it's Minneapolis with two ends. <laughs> Sorry for that, it was my mistake. <laughs> so imagine, as we grow, okay, Austin, community first village, can be powered by grid mates in 50 countries, or communities by grid mates in every country that support another community in another country. So you can create your own grid. You can become a virtual energy provider for somebody else. But also, there is another market behind the hill, which is called prosumers, people that are producing and storing energy in their own homes. They are called prosumers. It is coming from the producer and consumer of energy. I can do both in the same time, so I am a prosumer. So for them, for these guys, we give the opportunity to click and share electricity with their friends and family members, not only with the people in need. We are a startup. We started about one year ago. This was the time that we received our first investment. Gridmate was an idea. When we first received uh, our check, we started the implementation. We launched the platform in March 2014. And uh, we have received uh, quite important awards. The most important is uh, the Department of Energy, US Department of Energy. We won a $100,000 grant for uh, the Sons of Catalyst competition. We also have a pilot plant technology and we received quite a lot of uh, attraction in the media. My name is uh, George. I'm uh, the CEO and co-founder, but it is important to meet the rest of the team. Costas, who used to be my supervisor, my PhD in the university in Surrey, UK. But uh, as an academic, he also wanted to do business, so he did another company. He was a software as a service provider for Vodafone. And now we ended up with, working together. Angelo Sangelo, he used to be the vice president of economic development in uh, the Chamber of Commerce. He's also now the founder of International Accelerator, an accelerator here in Austin that is focused on uh, foreign born entrepreneurs. And uh, Andre Carvalho is uh, a utility expert and actually one of the person, Angelos and Andre, that uh, convinced me to come uh, to the United States. Because they said, George, this is a, a very interesting idea. You need uh, to launch it here in the United States, make it a business. <laughs> and I remember myself taking uh, the plane back home. And I was thinking, oh my God, I'm moving again. <laughs> <laughs> because I moved when I was 23 until uh, I was 27 to go to London. Then I went back to Greece, I said, now I'm settling down. I'm becoming a professor and relax my life. No. 34 years old, <laughs> I said uh, to my mother, and don't laugh, Mediterranean mothers are hardcore. <laughs> Mama, I'm going to the United States. <laughs> no! <laughs> I don't allow you. I said, Mom, I need to do it. <laughs> so it was a crazy experience to say to a Mediterranean mother that, uh, the son is leaving again. My father gave me the blessing, said to go, because he used to be a PhD at Princeton University, my father. So I said to go to the United States, it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> so we all have the power to energize people's lives. What I want to ask you is we are a startup company, we are young, we are feeding the baby. The baby needs food, so like us on Facebook, share uh, our page. If you want to donate, you can go to bitmates.com. 100% of your contribution will be given for the energy needs of Community First Village, 100%. Type $5, give $5, or share, like us on Facebook. So I'm here to answer any question that you have. I will be honored to provide answers to your questions in terms of our business, but also my experience as a foreign born entrepreneur. Thank you very much. Yes? So as far as getting more users to join Gridmates and provide incentives for people to start sharing, um, have you 
like I, I understood some of the nonprofit angle of saying, hey, donate, and then you can help, help pay our electric bill instead of just giving us $20, it'll help reduce our input costs, right? So have you partnered with, are you looking into partnering with other, I don't know, entertainment companies or whatever, like, hey, if you do this, we'll get you like a free promo ticket to a concert or mm -hmm. something like that. Is, what, what ideas do you guys have in the works to make it more fun for yeah. the average people? Uh, first of all, um, uh, the nonprofits cannot only be recipients of energy in order to reduce their operational costs. What we are launching uh, next month is uh, in collaboration with Austin Nico. We are going to provide help to 200 veteran families in uh, Austin. They are just now providing uh, housing, and uh, we are going to provide, not we, we, <laughs> you actually, uh, you are going to be able to donate for their energy needs. So you can donate to an individual. In order to make it the tax deductible for the donors, we have uh, this layer of with the non-profit, so you can receive the tax deduction. Uh, so you can give energy to an individual too. And also with a non-profit in San Francisco we are launching uh, next month. It's called Cadillac Hotel. It's a hotel in uh, downtown San Francisco that provides shelter to homeless people. So for non-profits, we, pro we focus on non-profits that uh, they provide housing facilities. In terms of fun, yes, that's why in the third step, when you give energy, you can receive <coughs> an award. So now we are testing how this can be more efficient. We ran a, a campaign with South by Southwest Tico, and we gave a free ticket for a person that donated energy. We ran another competition with uh, Energy Thought Summit, another conference. More awards will come soon. We're in discussion with some corporations. <coughs> Sorry. And the other fun thing is that it can be cost neutral for you. So you click to donate, you will receive energy saving tips to help you save on your bill. But also we are integrating with uh, smart meters, smart thermostats, so we can automatically save this energy in your home. So you click, you give energy, you click again, you save energy in your home. Uh, I like that. Thank you. Yes? Um, so, I find this fascinating. I've been watching you guys for a while. And in the city of Austin, I noticed Austin Energy is where your partners with the community. Community first village, yeah. So, we have a, what is it? It's like citizen assistance program, the CAP program. The CAP. Like, so, you can donate to that every month on your bill, and like nobody does. Mm -hmm. uh, that is uh, the business concept of Gridmates. So, we provide our software to utilities to enhance their customer assistance programs. Because, uh, sorry. <coughs> utilities have not yet realized that uh, the majority sorry, <coughs> the majority of people yes. he's my friend, uh, I know he's okay. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm sure. laughs> uh, so the majority of the utility customers now are millennials, generation X. And by writing down in a sentence, <coughs> donate to the CAP program, it means nothing to me. All right, I will never do that. So that's why nobody is donating. Last year, Austin Energy, through the CAP program, raised $60,000 in one year. Austin Energy has uh, 1 million customers. Uh, we raised for Community First Village as a startup company 55 in four months, 55,000. So the same amount in four months. Uh, we had visibility to 1,000 people. We, didn't, we don't have yet uh, the, mark, the funds to do marketing. So we are trying with some organic growth and you know some boost posts to in Facebook to convince people to donate. So if a user feels that every dollar will be used for a specific purpose and not for something else, I can see my impact and I can be dynamic, interactive, but also I can save in my bill by doing that. And I can win awards, it can be more fun. So crowdfunding uh, applications have been proven that they can work, especially if it is well designed and communicated. So we are enabling crowdfunding for energy. Yeah? Um, so in my opinion, uh, one of the biggest challenges for addressing issues relevant 
to poverty with technology is that oftentimes it can be tough for the recipients of this aid uh, to have access to this kind of technology. So does Gridmates have any kind of outreach programs in order to get adoptees uh, on board so that they can start receiving benefits? Yeah. Uh, so for the beginning, we are going to launch more like, uh, it's going to be anonymous. So you cannot donate to Jack or Mary right. neighborhood. So we are, you can, but you can donate in different categories of people in different locations. So you can select to donate to a veteran, to veterans in uh, zip code 78746 in Austin. Or you can donate to single mothers in uh, the other zip code or to people with medical problems to other places. So you can donate to categories of people in specific locations. Uh, the location is important because energy poverty depends on weather data and environmental conditions. So last year in uh, near Boston, I think there was a family of six uh, members that died because they didn't pay their bills, they cut off their supply, there was snow, they start burning uh, wood in the house, they slept and they never woke up. So you see that according to environmental data, problems can have exponential growth. So you would like to give energy to this zip code in uh, New York, for example. So it's gonna be ca different categories of people in different locations at the beginning. And uh, then in collaboration with utilities and non-profits, because customers, utility customers that cannot afford to pay, they are registered to their database, then it will be an opt-in solution for them. So they're gonna receive an email, would you like, or when they go to pay their bills, would you like to be registered in our program called Energize Lives? And here your name and surname uh, displayed. So it can be an opt-in. Yeah. Um, so my question is about the uh, the recipient, like as well as, so I get the user experience from a donor perspective, like I've got the app, I can donate to a certain category of people in a certain area. Um, but like if I'm the recipient, what is my experience? Like, like do I not have power one day and then I just do the next day? Like how does that, what's sort of the flow there? The recipient will receive credits of energy in their bill. Okay. So when you're gonna receive your bill, they're gonna see minus 100 kilowatt hours because of grid mates. Cool. So it's, uh, you're gonna receive help credits in your bill. It depends on the participant on how well it's gonna be implemented the software, the program by the utilities, it's gonna be a hundred percent of your bill or a percentage. And of course the utility has the ability to, to give it different priorities. So people that have real difficulties or people that don't. I think it's eight o'clock. I need to give the floor to Nick. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, and before you leave, take our flyers, our batteries. <laughs> Thanks so much for presenting, George. I got cool. Thanks. So give me one second to pull up our next presentation. It's going to be a very quick one. So before we split into our breakout team for the evening, I think many of you are familiar with that this is a very action-focused group, and so we work on immigration and advocacy every single month. And before we get down to that, I wanted to quickly share some of the amazing successes we've had in the past couple weeks. Um, so first off, I want to congratulate Maura Masters on getting her op-ed on immigration reform published in Latino Magazine. Um, so congratulations to her. And she brought along a bunch of copies that she's going to let us hand out. So if you're interested... I have like four copies. <laughs> I'm not that big of a celebrity. I believe her op-ed is on page 96. I think so. So um, feel free to come up and grab a copy. Um, we're very excited about Maura's op-ed. Um, and also, um, several of our Democracy Project team members are on um, the Austin Council in Charge of Immigrant Affairs. And they recently um, released a huge report um, looking into, um, into the, the um, affairs of Austin immigrants and released this big report. So we're really proud of our Democracy Project members who took part in that big study. The other thing I want to emphasize from this past month is that we launched a new chapter in Dallas. And we're the first state that has launched a second chapter, so we're really proud that we've, we've been the, 
the first chapter to do that. You can see some photos from our presentation, our new chapter members, and we're really excited to see what they're gonna accomplish um, in the very near future. And finally, I wanted to give you guys a sneak peek into our strategy for the next year and a half or so. Um, so to be brutally honest with you guys, it looks like a comprehensive immigration reform bill isn't gonna pass this year. And there's a chance it probably won't pass next year. And that's just what happens when you're in an election cycle. Everyone focuses on who's gonna be in the White House and major controversial issues get pushed to the sidelines. Um, and I know that fighting for a big bill like this is what keeps a lot of you guys coming here every single month. And so yes, unfortunately not gonna happen in the very near future. The flip side of this is that we have an opportunity to create a window for the exact kind of bill that we want. And we're not gonna spend so much time reacting to bills that come out, but actually advocating with key members of Congress saying, this is the kind of comprehensive immigration reform bill we wanna see. So you guys are gonna be a very big part of convincing swing votes in the Austin congressional delegation that comprehensive immigration reform is the way to go. Um, and we do think that early 2017 should be our next big window. So we planned a series of campaigns that will help create that window right after the presidential elections. Um, the first campaign that we're most excited about right now is gonna culminate next month. So that's what we're gonna be focusing on in our breakouts, is that the White House is gonna announce um, a startup visa program for entrepreneurs um, like George. Um, so we're very excited about that. You'll learn more about that in your breakouts. Um, a couple other key dates for you all to keep in mind are the presidential primaries are gonna happen in Texas next March. Um, got some that month as well. Um, the H-1B high school visa cap is gonna be hit next April. Um, and then finally, the Supreme Court has a good chance for releasing a major immigration related decision next, January, uh, next June. So we're looking ahead to that as well. Um, one thing I want you all to keep in mind is that these are all campaigns that we're kind of gonna be working on throughout the year. It's not just, um, we're gonna focus on the Supreme Court stuff in June of next year. There are gonna be key dates around that kind of rolling throughout the next year and a half. So just know that these overlap a lot. We call them the waves internally because all these campaigns overlap so much. Um, so now it's time to finally break out into our project teams. Um, if you're a new member, you're gonna join Sungjae. Um, he is our welcome ambassador who welcomes new members to the group. And he will lead you through a presentation and a conversation telling you everything you need to know about comprehensive immigration reform and Forward's role in the fight for this very important policy. Um, if you're someone with a tech specific skill set, you're going to join Luke, uh, my younger brother. <laughs> <laughs> We're not actually related, but yeah. we just look like it. <laughs> Um, so if you're somebody with tech specific skills, if you're a software developer, if you have experience with digital marketing campaigns, if you're a designer, um, you're going to join Luke. Um, we're going to head to a conference room and so just meet us at the back of the room and I'll be in that group as well. And if you're somebody who has more of an offline skill set, you like to network, you're interested in meeting with members of Congress, running letter drives, you're going to be meeting with Pinoc who's in the back and Enrique who's also in the back. Um, they're also going to go to a conference room so just meet at the back of the room and we'll go together. Um, so with that, it's time to begin the action portion of the evening where we'll talk about our plans for this start of visa announcement. So break into teams. And new members are staying right here.